Okay, this video is about using tuned coax stubs for harmonic suppression and bandpass filters. I do some contesting and for field day and things like that and for some emergency nets. You may have two people operating or two rigs on the air at the same time and I've experienced the most difficulty having one station on 40 meters and another station on 20 meters and the 40 meter station clobbers the 20 meter station. So this coax tub is a quarter wavelength on 40 meters, a quarter wavelength electrically, shorted, and it's got a switch on the end of it so it can be used in the shorted position or the open position. In the shorted position it will pass signals on 40 meters and 15 meters and it nulls harmonics on 20 and 10. And if you flip the switch and open it, the same stub will pass signals on 20 and 10 and null signals from 40 and 15. So if you've got one shorted on your 40 meter station and you've got another one just like it open on your 20 meter station, uh, between both of them you've got a lot of harmonic suppression there. So this is the picture of it or here this is the uh, it's got a um, pill bottle on the end of it to give strain relief for the switch to short it and open it and it is connected with just a T connector in line between the rig and the antenna in this case it's right between my radio and antenna tuner so it's in parallel with the antenna system just a simple T connector with the shorted uh, coax stub connected to the center now I'll reposition the camera and I'll show you how it nulls uh, signals on 40 meters. Okay, this is a signal on 40 meters. It's fairly strong, uh, ranging from S S3 to S5, and this is in the pass position, so it's passing signals on 40 meters. There, I just switched it to null, so the signal is almost it's still readable, but there's no signal on the S meter. I'll go back to pass again. and then we'll switch it back to null. So it's a significant difference. I notice uh, between other testing uh, between 3 to 5S units. So that's anywhere from depending on signal fading and stuff, it's hard to track uh, without uh, measuring a solid signal or, a, or a, some sort of a test equipment in, in excess of 20 dB anyway. So that's a pretty significant improvement if you've got one on each end of the circuit. Okay, here's another voice signal on 40 meters. This is with uh, in-pass mode, so it's shorted. And there I just switched it to null. So there's null, in-pass, null, in-pass. So there's an easy 3S units there. Okay, here's a 20 meter signal in the pass mode, so it's open. And then when I switch it, there's the signal null. So it uh, works quite a bit, uh, quite a bit better than not having anything at all. This is uh, a regular bandpass filter can cost eighty dollars for the least expensive ones, and you can build this for less than half of that, even if you had to buy all the coax. So if you've got one on your 40 meter station and one on your 20 meter station, the combination of both of those, it gives you a lot of harmonic suppression and uh, hopefully give you a lot more uh, inter or less interference issues for field day and your MCON nets and things of that nature if you're using two HF rigs at the same time. So let's build one. Okay, the original article that this idea came from is a multi-band coax stub came from November 2004 QST hands-on radio and the formula for making these stubs a quarter, uh, for a quarter wave is 246 times the velocity factor divided by the frequency so this is RG213 or RG8U with a poly, polyurethane dielectric or polyethylene with a velocity factor of 0.66. So the formula comes out to be about 22.8. The article says to cut it at 24 foot and trim it down 
from there. So I've already built two of these, and it mine come in right at 23 feet, or no, it's 22, yeah, 22 feet, 11 inches, just hair under 23 feet. So after you make up a cable and you put a connector on the end of it, short the end of the cable, just twisting the wires together, and then we can turn on the analyzer. And according to the article, you tune the stub at the harmonic because the, S the antenna analyzers are sharper and easier to tune at lower impedances than they are higher impedances. So what we're looking for is reactance. And the reactance is the X on the meter. We don't care about the SWR, and we don't care about the impedance. We're looking at the reactance, and it's pretty low. So if I want to tune this for a quarter wave shorted stub, then I want to go to the harmonic. In the middle of the band would be 7 point, or 14.2, which would put the middle of the 40 meter band at 7.1. But I've got an adapter on this antenna analyzer. So that adds to the length. So I'm going to shoot for an X of 0 at 14.1. So as I sweep down and my X is dropping, and I see that uh, I'm a little low. So I'm, the stub is still long. So I'm going to cut it off and short it again and come back and measure it again. Okay, I cut about an inch off of that stub and I turn the frequency back up again and we'll sweep down to see the lowest frequency where we hit zero reactants. We should be right about the length of my other stubs. Pretty close. Yeah, there we are. That's pretty close. And I'm going to go with that. And we'll put a switch on it and make a multi-banded stub. Okay, here's the stub with the switch installed to make it multi-banded. A lot of contesters use stubs after their amplifiers. They use bandpass filters between the radio and the amplifier and they have stubs after the amplifier. But they use monoband stubs for high power applications. Because on 40 meters, when this is uh, where this stub is tuned for, it has a very high reactance. And on 20 meters, at the harmonic, it has a low reactance. So it could have some very high voltages if you was running high power, and you could arc across this switch. So I would only recommend it for low power applications, field day, and things of that nature. And uh, if I can get this video up in time, it's just in time for field day. And in August, T-Rex. So, 73. Thanks for watching my very first video.